Peace to everybody out there. <laughs> we gonna try this again. Uh, I don't know what's going on with Instagram, but they're doing a little bit things different. Um, when you're doing live, it um, was recording. I was able to see myself before. Now it's starting to cut out on me. I don't know why. I can't see myself. Um, but anyway, it is recording apparently. So I'm going to continue on. I'm going to start over from what I did before. But hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Hope everybody had a good week and uh, try to stay positive throughout the week. First, motivating yourself positively and if it was an opportunity to uh, motivate somebody else positively. So, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's feeling all right. Okay. Um, as a child, um, I've always been interested in the scriptures in particular, the Bible, and uh, more specifically than that is the um, the mysticism or mysteries of the the, the Bible, the scriptures. Um, to me, I, I'm always intrigued by um, trying to learn things. And if you read the scriptures, they have a lot of mysteries, even though um, some have been revealed according to Christ. Um, Yahshua ben Yosef. Um, the son, the only begotten son of God, the Christ. Um, he said that he thought he thanked God um, for blessing uh, babes with knowledge and the mysteries of the kingdom um, and not giving that, that um, knowledge to the prudent but to babes. And I believe that's what it says. You can look that up. I'm kind of paraphrasing. But I believe that's what he what it says. So he clearly says there's mysteries um, that were revealed, and there are some things that will not be revealed. Just like when the the coming, um, the second coming of him, what that mystery would be in the day and the hour, along with the uh, they said that I will come like a thief in the night. You know, so no, he said nobody knows that but the Father. So there are mysteries that were mysteries back then. There will continue to be mysteries, and some of those mysteries will re re be revealed to some of us, um, and eventually, I, I think, to all of us at some point, you know, if that's if that's the Most High's will. So, um, I've always been, like I said, interested in in these scriptures, and. Um, I'll be coming out with one of the books that's not in the regular canonized Bible. Um, I'll be reading out of the King James Version with the Apographa. Did I say it again? The King James Version with the Apographa. And the Apographa is spelled A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-H-A. A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-H-A. And I'm using using um, the Bible app um, on my phone. You can either look up Google Apps or I guess Apple Apps if you have an Apple. Um, and it's just a brown Bible with gold lettering, um, and it has a um, red placeholder at the at the bottom, like a little ribbon, like you have in a Bible. Um, so that's the app that I use to listen and read um, the Bible and you can download different versions and like I said I'm reading out the, the King James Version with the Apographa so so within the Apographa there are 11 um, additional books um, in between Malachi and Matthew so there are 11 different books and the book that I'll be reading out of today um, it's called Baal and the Dragon. And the main character of this, uh, ch this scripture is Daniel. So um, if you read the introduction, if you have that, that app, it'll give you a little background according to them. And you still have to do your own research, especially when you're dealing with um, interpretations of things. Um, 
you will always want to do your own research to see um, if it's true or not. So read that introduction, but also go back and do your own research and um, do what you feel is correct and um, search for the truth with those things. So I'm, just, I'm not going to get into the interpretation of their introduction, but I'm going to read the scripture. And it's only one chapter. It's only one chapter. Um, and it really coincides with the book of Daniel. Okay. Um, as I was thinking about this, what I was going to talk about today, um, Daniel has some parallels to... Uh, another person in history that's not talked about a lot especially in um western uh, philosophy they have their own version um but saint george um of ethiopia um just remember him and i and i believe there it's not no believe i know there are some parallels um to daniel and um, St. George of Ethiopia okay so I'm going to read um, the, this one book and it's only one chapter called Baal and the Dragon okay so it reads as so heading of this first part is called Daniel Counselor of King Cyrus okay and the king Asti, ages, was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. And Daniel conversed with the king and was honored above all his friends. Second part. Daniel denies that Baal eats and drinks. So this is at verse 3. Now the Babylonians had an idol called Baal, and there were spent upon him every day twelve great measures of fine flour and forty sheep and six vessels of wine and the king worshipped it and went daily to adore it but daniel worshipped his own god and the king said unto him why doest not thou worship baal who answered and said because I may not worship idols made with hands, but the living God, who have created the heaven and the earth, and has sovereignty over all flesh. Then said the king unto him, Thinkest thou not that Baal is a living God? Seest thou not how much he eateth and drinketh every day? Then Daniel then Daniel smiled and said, O king, be not deceived, for this is but clay within and brass without, and did never eat or drink anything. So the king was wroth and called for his priests and said unto them, If ye tell me not who this is that devours these expenses, ye shall die. But if ye can certify me that Baal devoureth them, then Daniel shall die, for he hath spoken blasphemy against Baal. And Daniel said unto the king, Let it be according to thy word. Okay. All right. This next part is called The Priest Eat the Offering Set Before Baal. Now the priests of Baal were threescore and ten, beside their wives and children. And the king went with Daniel into the temple of Baal. So Baal's priest said, Lo, we go out, but thou, O king, set on the meat and make ready the wine and shut the door fast and seal it with thine own signet. And tomorrow when thou comest in, if thou findest not that Baal hath eaten all up all, we will suffer death. Or else, Daniel, that speaketh falsely against us. And they, and they little regarded it, for under the table they had made a privy entrance. 
whereby they entered in continuous, continually and consumed those things. So when they were gone forth, the king set meats before Baal. Now Daniel had commanded his servants to bring ashes, and those that strewed throughout all the people in the presence of the king alone. Then they went out and shut the door and sealed it with the king's signet, and so departed. Now in the night came the priests and their wives and children, as they were wont to do, and did eat and drink up all. All right, I have a title of the next section within the chapter. It's called Daniel Exposes the Priest's Fraud and Cyrus Kills Them. And this is verse 16. In the morning, bedtime, the king arose and Daniel with them. And the king said, Daniel, are the seals whole? And he said, O, yea, O king, they be whole. And as soon as he had opened the door, the king looked upon the table and cried with a loud voice, Great out thou, O Baal, and with thee is no deceit at all. Then laughed Daniel and hailed the king that he should not go in and said, Behold now the pavement and mark well whose footsteps are these. And the king said, I see the footsteps of men, women, and children. And the king was angry and took the priest with their wives and children and showed him the privy doors where they came in and consumed such thing as were upon the table. Therefore the king slew them and delivered Baal into Daniel's power who destroyed him and his temple. So that's very interesting. Um, I had never heard of that before. Um, but I found that very interesting um, about this scripture. Um, it seems like a prelude to things to come when Daniel's in the uh, lion's den. Okay. So we'll start reading the next section, which is called Daniel Kills the Dragon of Babylon. And in that same place, there was a great dragon which they of Babylon worship. And the king said unto Daniel, Wilt thou also say that this is of brass? Lo, he liveth, he eateth, and drinketh. Thou canst not say that he is no living God. Therefore, worship him. Then said Daniel to the king, I will worship the Lord my God, for he is the living God. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this dragon without sword or staff. The king said, I give thee leave. Then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and did seize them together and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth and so the dragon burst in sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods ye worship. When they of Babylon heard that, they took great ignitation and conspired against the king, saying, The king is become a Jew, and he has destroyed Baal. He has slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us Daniel or else we will destroy thee and thy house. Interesting. All right, this next section is called Daniel Cast into the Lion's Den, which we are familiar with, with the book of Daniel that's um, in the Bible without the Acrypha. Apographer, I'm sorry. This is verse 30. Now when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them, who cast him into the lion's den where he was six days. 
And in the den there were seven lions, and they had given them every day two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them to the intent they might devour Daniel. Okay. Next section is called Daniel fed by Habakkuk. Now there was in Judea a prophet called Habakkuk who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go carry the dinner that thou hast unto Babylon and unto Daniel, who is in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him by the hair of his head and through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which God has sent thee. And Daniel said, Thou hast remembered me, O God, Neither hast thou forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. So Daniel rose and did eat. And the angel of the Lord set, set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Okay, this next section is called Daniel delivered from the lion's den. Okay, this is verse 40. Upon the seventh day, the king went to bewail Daniel, and when he had came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art thou, O God, O Lord God of Daniel, and there is none, none other beside thee. And he drew him out, and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. So that's the end of this book called Baal and the Dragon. And it says in the, in the um, introduction um, that it can, it's linked to other books within the Acripa. And like I said, read that instruction for yourself with that app. And I'm pretty sure there are, there are other um, inf other information about Baal and the dragon um, within the the uh, uh, apographa that you can learn about. Um, I just found it interesting that uh, it talks about the lions den, Daniel being cast into the lions den, in um, this book as well. But it also brings up him killing a dragon, which is interesting. Um, dragons are mentioned throughout the Bible. Um, unicorns. Um, you know, we hear about the dragon in Revelation. There are several dragons in Revelation. Um, there's a dragon mentioned in Job. Um, it's very interesting. Um, the different creatures, um, angels, um, you hear the angel of the Lord is mentioned in here, um, in Baal and the dragon. And you also hear it in, um, in Matthew, where the angel of the Lord came to, I believe it's Elizabeth, uh, John the Baptist, uh, mother, and Mary, uh, Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua ben Yosef, uh, the only begotten son of God, the Christ. Um, the angel of the Lord came unto Mary as well, the mother of the Christ. So it's, it's very interesting, um, the different things and the different um, entities that are mentioned within the Bible that sometimes we skip over 
And I find it interesting. I really do. I find it interesting um, that uh, these things are talked about. Um, and I want to learn more about them. I know other people want to learn more about them as well, especially um, people that, pop, that have possibly um, read the Bible all their lives. Um, so... Uh, the parallel I mentioned before at the beginning um, about uh, St. George, uh, St. George of Ethiopia, and I left the part off St. George the Dragon Slayer. I wanted to say that at the end because um, he is called St. George the Ethiopian the Dragon Slayer. Um, it is said, I believe, and you can you can look it up. He slayed dragons in Africa, and he also slayed dragons in Europe. Um, your other several European um, nations have pictures of him. Um, they have pictures of him in Ethiopia. They have pictures of him in Europe. Um, but yes, his name is St. George the Ethiopian, the Dragon Slayer. And they have pictures of him. They have several pictures of him. There are, there are so many pictures um, on the internet that you can look up of him. And specifically in Ethiopia, um, they have pictures of him within um, their text. Okay? So... Look him up, and I believe um, Daniel was a predecessor to St. George, the Dragon Slayer of Ethiopia. Um, obviously, he killed a dragon in um, this book called Baal and the Dragon. Um, and what does it say? It says with, let's go back. What did he use? Just following, just going to look back. It says, Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and seethed them together and made lumps of it. This he put in the dragon's mouth and so the dragon burst in sunder so he basically died after eating this concoction of uh, pitch fat and hair okay so Daniel did this but Daniel is a, a positive man a positive prophet um, he was cast into Daniel's den he killed a dragon and he also was challenged by King um, Again, to bow down to his, to the king's God, but uh, Daniel wouldn't bow down, and he um, basically went on a fast with nothing but what is called pulp, um, which is basically fruits and vegetables, you know, and um, he came out victorious in that challenge as well. So Daniel was a, a, a very positive and um, prophet. I would say he was a prophet. Um, and he did some very great things. Um, going against um, what the popular um, instructions and popular um, ways of the people of Babylonia. He would not bow down to Babylon. Um, and I, I find that he's a great example that we should be following. We should not be bowing down um, to modern day Babylon, fire burn Babylon, you know. So um, let's look at Daniel as an inspiration. He came up against some great people kings, people that uh, led nations, and um, he did not waver 
and his knowing that um, he was protected and he knew the most high God and um, we should do the same we should not bend we should stand up in what we know to be true and the most high will help us as you see with his angels and with people you know so you never know who you're talking to you may be talking to an angel um, that may be there to help you and I know I've probably come in contact and uh, with an angel and you know I know for sure they gave me some positive words you know so um, you never know who you are you're talking to talking to so be nice to people you know but uh, as I said before I believe Daniel was well I know Daniel was a predecessor um, to uh, St. George, um, the Ethiopian, the dragon slayer of Ethiopia. Um, and Ethiopia has a unique um, position in the Bible. Um, very unique situation. So even look up the word Ethiopia, how many times it comes up in the Bible. And the connection there with Ethiopia and um the children of Israel you know that connection not only in the old testament but also in the new testament in acts uh, ethiopia is mentioned in acts as well so um if you're interested in the mysteries and the mysticism of the scriptures um Look up those things. Look, read the um, King James Version with the Apocrypha. It's very interesting. Um, do your your research, and um, you know, let the Most High guide you in which way you should go um, when you're researching these things. And research and find the truth. Um, scripture says that you know, if you want to find the truth, uh, God will lead you. So. Be sincere in it, and not only to know just to be knowing, but knowing um, the the mysteries of the scriptures in order to um, help others and help yourself, you know, positively. It's not knowing just to be knowing and saying that we know something more than somebody. You should use these scriptures um, to help you uh, manifest positive things in our lives, in our lives every day, you know which comes to another subject that I'll probably be talking about healing um, healing is mentioned throughout the entire Bible um, but are we manifesting that you know so um, hope everybody um, have a good rest of their evening um, continue to do well continue to stay positive and um, continue searching for the truth and manifesting the truth through positivity. All right. Talk to y'all later. Peace.